We're taking you way back in time this morning, nearly 200 million years to the Jurassic era. In a new book, The Rise and Fall of the Dinosaurs, paleontologist Steve Brusati explores the lives of those great extinct animals. He invited us to see what's left of them. Only on CBS This Morning, Jonathan Vigliotti visits a real dinosaur graveyard off the coast of northern Scotland. Hundreds of millions of years have weathered Scotland's remote Isle of Skye, and the prehistoric secrets that are buried in its wrinkles have attracted a caravan of time travelers. This is spectacular. American paleontologist Steve Brusati invited us on his research team's quest. We're detectives now for the next hour. Okay, I'm just going to warn everybody, be careful going down. You never really know what you're going to find. Sometimes Brusati like has traveled to some of the world's most extreme landscapes. You know, I, I love dinosaurs more. I study dinosaurs. Is the Isle of Skye, is Scotland a new frontier for this research? I think Scotland is one of the most exciting new frontiers for dinosaurs. And there's still a lot of fossils to find here. And they're important fossils. Important because they come from the middle part of the Jurassic period, of which little is known. A time when dinosaurs evolved from the size of house cats into the monsters brought to life by Hollywood. In this real life Jurassic Park, Brusati is in pursuit of what could be stegosaur bones. It's over here, Doogie. The discovery trapped in a boulder. Oh, look at, okay. You can see the texture there. It has the grain of bone and it has that porous honeycomb type of texture. Believe it or not, these orange markings are prehistoric bones preserved in sandstone. This is a set of bones that Steve and his team have been looking for for well over a year. They have found them, but now the next challenge is trying to extract this rock to get those bones into a lab for studying. So if those are two different bones, you would have two platy bones. Paleontology is a lot like detective work. Detectives put people behind bars. <laughs> What's your end game here? We put fossils in museums. so. People can see them, people can enjoy them, people can get inspired by them. In the past 15 years, Brusati has helped identify 15 new species of dinosaur. A dinosaur hunt, is that what it's called in the profession? Well, <laughs> it sounds good, doesn't it? No, it he does. took yeah, us a few miles down the coast. And I always say it, and I know it's a little bit lame, but this is a real Jurassic Park. It is, it is. To a real Jurassic Lagoon. Was. They're covered by water so much of the time. But when the tide goes out, a land before time is revealed. About 170 million years ago, this would have been a watering hole. And today, you can literally walk in the footsteps of these dinosaurs. These prints here, believed to belong to the Brontosaurus. Brusati's team discovered around 50 dinosaur prints in this one location. And you can kind of see, okay, it's about the size of a basketball, maybe a little bit bigger, and then yeah. it has mm, something there, something there, something there, and those are toes. So this is a dinosaur footprint. I would never have guessed. <laughs> so 170 million years ago, you had this dinosaur, this jeep-sized plant-eating dinosaur, literally stepping right here. Brusati believes everything from long-necked sauropods to pterodactyls roam this part of Earth until an asteroid likely wiped them out. Some people say lumbering and foolish, but you make a point of saying, don't call them stupid. Some of them were enormous. Others evolved into birds. Some of them were very smart. So for me, they're nature's ultimate success story. And what do you think the lesson is for humans in all of this? I think the lesson for us is that the Earth is really old. The Earth changes a lot. Climates change, environments change, and sometimes the species that are the best adapted for a certain climate or environment, if something changes, they can go extinct. And that happened to the dinosaurs. And if it could happen to the dinosaurs that were around for 150 some million years, could that also happen to us? A journey to the past may help us see into the future. For CBS This Morning, Jonathan Vigliotti on the Isle of Skye. Well, I'm glad we saw a dinosaur footprint because halfway through it, Nora and I both go, where is a dinosaur bone? Where's a dinosaur head? That's very, very fascinating that all these years later, it's still there. And if you want to see real dinosaurs, the movie opens this Friday. Okay, Jurassic Park. There you, you go. You want to see the real dinosaurs. Good to know. This Friday.